Peace TV English, the solution for humanity. and modern science compatible, compatible or, incompatible. or incompatible science without religion is lame and religion without science is blind the glorious quran is not a book of science s c i e n c e but it's a book of signs s i g n s it's a book of ayat and there are no less than 6000 signs 6000 ayat out of which more than a thousand they speak about science and stephen hawkins a very famous scientist he writes in his book the brief history of time he says that the universe is expanding is the greatest discovery of the century which the glorious quran mentions 1400 years ago In the field of physics there's a theory called the theory of atomism and this states that atom is the smallest particle of matter and in arabic the word atom it is dharra so atom is the smallest particle of matter but an atom it too has elements and it too can be divided so does that mean the glorious quran is outdated allah subhanahu wa taala says in surah saba chapter number 34 verse number 3 and surah yunus chapter number 10 verse number 61 wa qala alladhina kafaru la ta'tina as-sa'a qul bala wa rabbi la ta'tiyannakum 'alim al-ghayb la ya'zubu 'anhum isqala dharratin fi as-samawati wa la fi al-ard wa la asghara min dhalik wa la akbar illa fi kitabin mubin the unbelievers say that the ah will never come to them tell them it will surely come to them in whose hands is the unseen and there are things greater and smaller than the atom each is recorded in a book well preserved so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there are things that are greater and smaller than the atom in the field of hydrology we know about the water cycle the water cycle it was discovered in 1580 by sir bernard palissy and we know regarding the water cycle that the water it evaporates and it goes into the clouds the clouds condense and water falls from the clouds previously people did not know in the 7th century bc tales of meletus he thought that it was due to the spray of the ocean which was picked up by the winds and fell into the interior as rain people did not know in the 7th century bc tales of meletus he thought that it was due to the spray of the ocean which was picked up by the winds and fell into the interior as rain people did not know and even people at the time of plato even they thought the water it went through a secret passage underground called the tartarus and even great thinkers and scholars like descartes even he thought that the water it went through a secret passage underground today we know the underground water it is due to the seepage of rain and allah subhanahu wa taala talks regarding the water cycle in great detail in several places it is mentioned in surah zumur chapter number 39 verse number 21 alam tara anna allah anzala min as-samaa'i maa'a see it not that allah subhanahu wa taala sends down water from the skies and he causes it to soak into the ground and he brings sown seeds of various colors to grow Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah rum chapter number 30 verse number 24 wa min ayatihi yurikumul barqa khawfan wa tam'a wa yunazzilu min as-sama'i ma'a fayuhyi bihi al-ard ba'da mawtiha see it not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
sends down water from the skies and he gives life to the earth after it is dead. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 18. It is we who send down water from the skies and we can store it and drain it easily. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Hijr, chapter number 15, verse number 22. We cause the fecundating of the winds. The Arabic word lawake is derived from the root word laqe. And its plural is also laqe. Meaning fecundating or impregnating. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the clouds they get impregnated and then water emerges from them. And the second type is the clouds they join together and there is lightning and water emerges from them. Further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 43. Alam tara anna Allah yuji sahaba, thumma yuallifu bayna, thumma yaja'alu rukaba, fatara al-wadaqa yakruju min khilali, wa yunazzilu min as-sama. See it not, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the clouds to move gently, and then makes them to join. And makes them into a heap, and water emerges from them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 48. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who makes the clouds to move gently and makes them into fragments and then water emerges from them. Further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 11. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks regarding the water cycle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks over here regarding the water cycle. Further it's mentioned in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 43. Alam tara anna Allah yudzi sahaba. See it not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down water from the clouds which look like mountains. Previously, 1400 years ago, there were no aeroplanes. But today when we go in the aeroplane, when we look down, the clouds, they look like mountains of wool. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks regarding the water cycle in great detail in several verses besides the one I've quoted. In Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 57. In Surah Raad, chapter number 13, verse number 17. In Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 48 and 49. In Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 9. In Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, verse number 34. In Surah Qaf, chapter number 50, verse number 9 and 10. In Surah Jasiyah, chapter number 45, verse number 5. In Surah Waqiyah, chapter number 56, verse number 67 to 70. Also in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 30. You can go on and on giving only references where the glorious Quran talks about the water cycle in great detail. So the glorious Quran talks regarding the water cycle in great detail 1400 years ago, which science has discovered it recently. In the field of geology, the geologists, they tell us that the radius of the earth it is approximately 3750 miles. And as you keep on going deeper, it keeps on getting hot and there is a lot of hot fluid. As you keep on coming higher and superficially, it keeps on getting cooler. And the superficial crust on which we live in, it is approximately 30 miles in thickness. And the geologists, they tell us that this could shake. And they come up with a phenomena called the folding phenomena, which gave rise to the mountain ranges. And due to these mountains, there is stability on the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Naba, chapter number 78, verse number 6 and 7. Alam naj'al al-ardha mihada. We have made the earth as an expanse. Wal jibala awtada. And the mountains as ten pegs, as takes. The Arabic word awtad, it means ten pegs or stakes. Like how you have a ten peg. And only a portion of the mountain we can see it on top. Whereas the mountains, they have got deep roots down inside. So only a portion of the mountain, we can see it on top. Like the tip of an iceberg. Whereas the mountains, they have got deep roots down inside. Further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Naziyat, chapter number 79, verse number 32. And Surah Ghashya, chapter number 88, verse number 19. That we have placed on the earth mountains standing firm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is placed on the earth mountains. And the best book on geology is the book The Earth, which is written by Frank Press. And it is referred by many universities and colleges. He writes in his book wherein he draws a mountain. And he says, 
that only a portion of the mountain we can see it on top. Whereas the mountains, they have got deep roots down inside. So only a portion of the mountain we can see it on top. And he says that due to these mountains, there is stability on the earth. And this is exactly what is mentioned in the glorious Quran 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 31. And Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 10. That we have placed on the earth mountains standing firm, lest you would shake. So the glorious Quran talks regarding geology in great detail 1400 years ago, which science has discovered it recently. In the field of oceanology, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 53. وَهُوَ الَّذِي مَرَجَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ هَذَا عَذْبٌ فُرَاتٌ وَهَذَا مِلْهُنْ أُجَاجٌ وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَهُمَا بَرْزَقًا وَحِجَرًا مَحْجُورًا It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has left two free bodies, one sweet and palatable and the other salty and bitter. Though they meet, yet they do not mix. There's a barrier between them which is forbidden to be trespassed. A similar message is repeated in Surah Rahman, chapter number 55, verse number 19 and 20. Marjal Bahraini al Taqiyan, Bainahuma Barzakul la Yabriyan. And it's Allah who has left two free water bodies, though they meet, yet they do not mix. There's a barrier between them which is forbidden to be trespassed. Now the Mufassirins, the commentators, they could not understand this verse. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, though they meet, yet they do not mix. They cannot understand this verse. Today after science has advanced, we have come to know that when one type of water flows into another type of water, it loses its constituents and gets homogenized into the water it's flowing. This homogenizing place in Arabic, it is called as Barzakh. And a very famous marine scientist by the name of Professor Hay. He talks about this barrier. And this can be seen with the naked eye at the southernmost tip of Cape Point in Cape Town, South Africa, where two free bodies, though they meet, yet they do not mix, one sweet and palatable and the other salty and bitter. And another good example is in Egypt, where the river Nile flows into the Mediterranean Sea. And another example is at the Gulf of Mexico where the water, they flow for thousands of miles and though they meet, yet they do not mix. And even the temperature of these two waters, they vary. Even the color, it varies. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks regarding oceanology in great detail. Verses, awakening contents. Unlock your hearts. Let us start to reflect and interact with the glorious Quran through simple and interactive grammar exercises. Explore the secrets of success that exist in the blessed lines of the Holy Quran. Using what you recite every day and night, learn 250 words that occur 55,000 times or 70% words of the Quran. Let's understand the Quran. Let's join Dr. Abdul Aziz Abdul Rahim in. Let's understand the Quran every Saturday at 4 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Al -Aziz, Al Aziz, the Almighty. Al Wadud, the All Loving. Al 
التواب the acceptor of your return الرزاق the provider الرقيب the all watchful ولله الأسماء الحسنى to Allah belongs the beautiful names فادعوه بها to call him upon them to understand more of Allah's beautiful names join me your brother Majid Mahmoud on my new series about understanding Allah's beautiful names on Peace TV Don't miss the chance to comprehend the seamless explanation of Allah's beautiful names in Understanding Allah's Beautiful Names, next on Peace TV. In the field of biology, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30. وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْنَ حَيْ أَفْلَا يُؤْمِنُونَ And we have created every living thing from water. Do not then believe. Imagine in the deserts of Arabia, 1400 years ago, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have created every living thing from water. And today we know that every living thing, it requires water. Even cytoplasm has 80% of water. And every living thing has 50 to 90 percent of water. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 45. Wallahu khalaqa kulla dabbatin mimma. And Allah has created every animal from water. Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 54. That have created every human being from water. In the field of botany, previously we did not know. That even plants have got sex, males and females. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse number 53. Allah zi ja'ala lakumul arda mahda, wa salaka lakum fiha subula, wa anzala minas sama'i ma'a, fa akhrajna bihi azwajam min nabatin shatta. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sends down water from the skies and he brings various plants each separate from one another. The Arabic word azwaj means spouses, sex, males and females. So today we know that even plants, they have got sexes, males and females. Even the unisexual plants, they have got distinct characteristics of males and females. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Raad, chapter number 13, verse number 3, وَمِنْ كُلِّ الثَّمَرَاتِ جَعَلَ فِيهَا زَوْجَيْنِ اسْنَيْنِ And fruits of every kind he has made into pairs, two and two. Today we know that even fruits, they have got sexes, males and females. Even fruits like bananas, figs, etc. Even they, they have got sexes, males and females. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yaseen, chapter number 36, verse number 36. Subhanalladhi khalaqa al-azwaja kullaha mimma tumbitul ard wa min anfusihim wa mimma la ya'alamun. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created every animal in pairs. And every human being in pairs, and things which you know, and things which you do not know. Even electricity, it has got negative and positive, protons and electrons. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that everything is created into pairs, things which you know, and things which we do not know. Further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the field of zoology, it's mentioned in the glorious Quran, in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 38. وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا طَائِرٍ يَطِيرُ بِجَنَاحَيْهِ إِلَّا أُمَمٌ أَمْثَالُكُمْ مَا فَرَّتْنَا فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ ثُمَّ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يُحْشَرُونَ And we have made every living creature that lives on the earth and every creature that has wings and flies in the air to live in communities like the human beings. Father Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse 68 and 69. وَأَوْحَى رَبُّكَ إِلَى النَّحْلِ أَنِ اتَّخُزِ مِنَ الْجِبَالِ بُيُوتًا وَمِنَ الشَّجَرِ وَمِمَّا يَعْرِشُونَ ثُمَّ كُلِي مِنْ كُلِّ الثَّمَرَاتِ فَاسْلُكِي سُبُلَ رَبِّكِ زُلُلًا 
it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has taught the bee to build its cells in human habitation and in trees and to eat what the earth produces and to find the spacious path of thy Lord with great skill. It was recently found fresh he discovered regarding the bees. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it is Allah who has taught the bee to build its cells in trees and in human habitation and to find the spacious path of the Lord with great skill. And found fresh he discovered regarding the bee. And he said that when a bee finds a new flower or a garden, it tells its fellow bees the exact direction to collect the nectar by a process called the bee dance. This bee dance in the glorious Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to find the spacious path of thy Lord with great skill. Previously we thought that it was the male bee which is the worker bee. But it is not the male bee which is the worker bee but it is the female bee which is the worker bee. And in Surah Nahal chapter number 16 verse 68 and 69 the words are Fasluki and Kuli meaning a female bee. No wonder Shakespeare in his play Henry the Fourth he shows wherein people are talking among themselves and the male bee the worker bee goes and reports to the king but today after science has advanced we have come to know it is not the male bee which is the worker bee but it is the female bee which is the worker bee and they do not report to the king but they report to the queen imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the gender of the bee 1400 years ago which science has discovered it recently Furthermore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Namal, chapter number 27, verse number 17 and 18. When Solomon, with his army of jinn, men and animals, approached a lowly valley, one of the ants said, O ye ants, get into your habitations before Solomon and his army trample you beneath the feet. Some people might think, what fairy tale book is the glorious Quran? The ants are talking among themselves. But today, after science has advanced, we have come to know that the animal or insect that is closest in resemblance to the human beings, it is the ant. The ants, they bury the dead, like how we human beings do it. They have sophisticated methods of labor, wherein they have the foremen, workers, managers, etc. They often meet to chat. They also have marketplaces, you know the souks, where they exchange the goods. And during the rainy season, if the grains they get wet, they get it out in the sunlight for drying. As though they knew that humidity will cause the rotting of the grains. And if on the grain the bud starts to grow, they chop off the bud as though they knew that budding will cause the rotting of the grains. Imagine the glorious Quran talks about the lifestyle of the ant 1400 years ago, which science has discovered it recently. Further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Kabut, chapter number 29, verse number 41. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَذُوا مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَوْلِيَا كَمَا سَلَا عَنْكَبُوتِ اتَّقَذَتْ بَيْتَ وَإِنَّا وَحَنَ الْبُيُوتِ لَبَيْتُ الْعَنْكَبُوتِ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ Those who take protectors, anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are building for themselves houses like the house of a spider. For indeed, the house of a spider is flimsy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who take helpers, anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are building for themselves houses like the house of a spider. And besides saying this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the spider, about the house of a spider that it is very flimsy. And today we know the relationship between the spiders it is very bad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the house of a spider that it is very flimsy. In the field of physiology, it was 600 years after the glorious Quran was revealed, Ibn Nafis he discovered regarding blood circulation. And 400 years after Ibn Nafis, 1000 years after the glorious Quran was revealed, William Harvey made it famous to the world. So in our textbooks we read, William Harvey he discovered regarding the blood circulation. But actually, it is Ibn Nafis who discovered regarding the blood circulation. This is all media. So actually it was Ibn Nafis who discovered regarding the blood circulation. And when we eat food, it goes through via the complex media and it goes to the intestine. And as far as blood circulation, 
and the production of milk is concerned. It is mentioned in the glorious Quran in a nutshell. When we eat food, it goes through via the complex media, very often through the liver and through the intestines. And then it goes to all the organs of the body, including the mammary glands for the production of milk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks, says in the glorious Quran, 1400 years ago, in Surah Nahl, chapter number 16, verse number 66. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَنَعَامِ لَإِبْرَةِ نُسْقِيكُمْ مِمَّا فِي بُطُونِ مِنْ بَيْنِ الْفَرْسِ In the cattle, there is an excellent example coming from between the conjunction, between the intestine and the blood. We produce milk that is pure for you to drink. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 21. وَإِنَّ لَكُمْ فِي الْأَنَعَامِ لَإِبْرَةِ نُسْقِيكُمْ مِمَّا فِي بُطُونِهَا وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَنَافِيُ كَثِيرَةِ وَمِنْهَا تَأْكُلُونَ And the cattle. In that, there is an excellent example. We produce milk out of them. And various benefits from them. And out of their meat you eat. All people of the world Can we spill a little justice? Scientific notions in the glorious Quran are among its endless aspects that can testify for the divine nature of this noble book. These scientific notions are probably the best addressed to the people of our time. I am Zaghloul al -Najjar. Please join me in this program to discuss some aspects of the scientific notions in the glorious Quran. <laughs> Appreciate the word-to-word -word authenticity of scientific notions and proven facts mentioned in the glorious Quran 1400 years ago in Scientific Notions in the Glorious Quran every Saturday at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV.